<laughs> I got to laugh at this one. This is what happens when you teach unsound doctrine. The Bible is very clear. The Bible says sound speech which cannot be condemned. It is not sound to say that we're underneath the new covenant because underneath the new covenant, you cannot die and you cannot sin. So now we have these individuals, these same reprobates that are teaching that they're underneath the new covenant, right? Now they're going as far as to say that they cannot die and they don't sin. You see, this is what happens when you teach unsound doctrine, when you're not speaking sound speech, which cannot be condemned. Again, the truth is that we're under grace. We're not under the new covenant. We will be underneath the new covenant when we are changed, when Yahweh Shai changes us. We have to be changed first. Then we'll totally be underneath the new covenant. We're under grace to learn about the new covenant and to hopefully achieve the new covenant, to hopefully achieve it when we are delivered by Yahweh Shai, pursuant to Matthew 24 and 30, then we are changed, pursuant to 1 Corinthians 15 and 52, in a twinkling of an eye. Then we'll be under the new covenant, then we'll be perfect, as we're supposed to be. But you got these dudes teaching that we are under the new covenant. Now, underneath the new covenant, you can't die and you can't sin. So the delusion is so strong with them. Remember, the Heavenly Father said, I will choose their delusions, right? The delusion is so strong with these individuals, and they're such reprobates, which the word reprobate means a mind void of judgment. Now they're going as far as to say they cannot die <laughs> and they don't sin. You see? This is what happens when you teach unsound doctrine, okay? <laughs> now, what I did was, um, that's why it's so important to just speak the truth in sincerity and simplicity. Just speak the truth. All we have to do is go by what the Apostle Paul said. He, he would know. Yahweh Shai taught him straight up, Okay? When he was Saul, he converted to Paul, and Yahweh Shai taught this man. So the Apostle Paul said, we are under grace. We are not under the law. We are under grace. Now, we are under grace also to, to learn the law to the best of our ability and to try to keep it to the best of our ability. Hence the scripture, we are rehearsing the righteous acts. That's Judges 5 and 11. For you to be justified by the law, as it is written, no man is justified by the law. For you to be justified by the law, you have to keep it perfect. And it's virtually impossible to keep it perfect in this flesh. Keep the law perfect. Because as it is written, the law is spiritual. But the Apostle Paul said that he is carnal, sold under sin, as, as we all. We all are carnal, sold under sin. We're in this carnal flesh. We're in this sinful, carnal flesh. So it's impossible for us to keep the law perfect to be justified by the law. Okay? You got a lot of Israelites that simply do not understand what they're involved in. And to tell the truth, a lot of them have been brought in to be reprobates, to be examples of how not to be in the faith. Okay? Remember, the Heavenly Father chose both. He chose, he chose those that are meet for repentance, i.e. the elect. And, so, and he also chose those that are not meet for repentance, i.e. the reprobates. He chose both of them. Okay? So, like the Apostle Paul said, we hope that we're not reprobates. That's why anytime an uh, unsound doctrine pops its or rears its ugly head, we go to work right on it. We go to work on it. Begin to fell the apostle town down, we go to work on it. Okay? So, what I did was I typed in the word grace. All right, because truly that's what we're under. Again, for confirmation of that, just go to Romans 6 and 14. The Apostle Paul said it, we're under grace. So, And when you look up the word grace, that's a powerful word because, as a matter of fact, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to the New Testament uh, definition of grace. Okay. Let me just pick a random scripture. This is Galatians 6 and 18. Now, I did this in the previous video, the one before the last video I did, I, I did this, but I'll do it again. 
because I like doing things like that. <laughs> here's, the, here's the Greek word for grace. Strong's G, 5485, charis, charis. Right, and the definition is as follows, of the merciful kindness by which God, which his name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, exerting his holy influence upon souls. So the fact that we're all into this work, that is grace. That's the very definition of grace. That's favor. Another word for grace. Think of grace as favor. We're being showed favor by the heavenly father Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai to be in this thing of ours and, and to spiritually prosper in it. Meaning we're getting all kind of wisdom. We're getting all kind of understanding. You know, uh, what else? We're getting, uh, we're favorable. We are favorable in the sight of the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, and the angels. We are favorable. All right? We're looked down upon with favor. That's grace. Another word for grace is favor. Okay? Of the merciful kindness by which the Heavenly Father exerting His holy influence upon souls turns them to Yahweh Shai. And eventually, based upon being under that grace, eventually we have access now to be made perfect like Yahweh Shai was made perfect. Yes, Yahweh Shai was made perfect. Okay? That's why he made the statement, in the third day I shall be perfected. That's our goal. We want to be perfect like Yahweh Shai. Now, through this grace, favor, we have access to that perfection. All right? We have access to that perfection. If Yahweh Shai, when he comes back, when he comes back, what I want to say is if uh, Yahweh Shai chooses us, if we're, on, we're, we're chosen, right? We've been shown grace, but if we're, we keep it all the way to the end and we're chosen, then we will, through that grace, we will be made perfect. That's the point I want to make. We'll be made perfect, like Yahweh Shai is perfect, right? Of the merciful kindness by which the Heavenly Father exerting his holy influence upon our upon souls, turns them to Yahweh Shai. We're hoping that's us. Keeps, strengthens, increases them in Christian faith, as in, in this Hebrew Israelite faith. All right, he keeps us in it. He strengthens us, right? You know, sometimes you'd be, you be feeling weak in the faith. Yahweh Barshim Yahweh Shai strengthens us. That is grace. All right? The reason why he do that is because we're favored. We're favored. Okay? Uh, keeps, strengthens, increases them in, the, in Christian faith or Hebrew Israelite faith. Knowledge, affection, and kindles them. Increases them in what? In knowledge. Check that out. Affection, meaning love. And kindles them to the exercise of the Christian virtues. That is the very definition of grace, man. You see how powerful that is? Okay, so uh, let's take a look. Uh, down here we see the gift of grace. Indeed, it's a gift. All right, now what I did was I typed in the word grace, right? And there's some powerful scriptures dealing with grace. The first one is, deals with Noah. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's why he was saved. He was favored. In other words, above all the spirits that were on the planet Earth during the time of Noah, he was favored the most. That's why he that's why grace was found in him. Now, how powerful is that? Okay? So that's exactly what we're under, man. We're under grace, man. We're under grace. The the Yahweh Shah has just shown us favor. All right? He, he chose us. He just he just chose us. Okay? He just chose us. To show us favor. Okay? I mean, I'm. Uh, <laughs> what more can I say? Uh, so let's get. Um, we're going to go to the New Testament. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me go to the. Let me see what the Proverbs and the Psalms have to say about grace. All right, here's Psalms. Okay, that's dealing with a different topic. Uh. Oh, this is a good one. Proverbs 1 and 9. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy neck and chains about thy, unto thy head and chains about thy neck. No doubt it's talking about wisdom. 
Um, let's see. Bear with me for a minute. Oh, John 1 and 16, and of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. Check that out, John 1 and, and 16. Oh, look at this, John 1, 17. For the law was given by Moses, which, by the way, these guys, they're boasting about how they're in, they're in the new covenant. I find it funny because they couldn't even keep the old covenant in that flesh that they're in. How the hell are you going to keep the new covenant? <laughs> Wait a minute. In the flesh you're in, you guys that are boasting about you're under the new covenant, in the flesh you're in, you couldn't even keep the old covenant. All right? You couldn't even keep the old covenant in the flesh that you're in. How the hell are you going to keep the new covenant? Talking about you under the new covenant. Again, see, this is what happens when you teach unsound doctrine. These guys are so deluded, now they believe, and they actually say this. It's on my comment board. And you saw it on the video uh, with uh, the debate with Alazar and them dudes. When Alazar asked, because they were talking about they were the apostles. So, so Alazar said, you guys are the apostles? And then one dude said, yeah, you're looking at them. Then Alazar started laughing. Then Alazar said, uh, so you can't die. You can't die. Then they, you know, they, they, they started uh, uh, mumbling. And then finally... The one dude said, yeah, well, that's what it says. And under the new covenant, you can't die. And then finally, they just said, no, we can't die. And that's when Alazar lost it. <laughs> All right. But see, that's what happens when you teach unsound doctrine. All right. You got guys out there that are totally deluded, man. They're suffering from delusions. All right. They're suffering from delusions. Okay. So this is, this is why we have to be defenders of the gospel. We just have to be because you got guys out there that are totally deluded out of their minds. All right? Like it says in the scripture, the whole head is sick. Okay? John 1 and 16. And of his fullness have all we receive and grace for grace. There's that word grace again. John 1 and 17. For the law was given by Moses, which we couldn't keep. <laughs> That's why we kept going in, into captivity, into captivity, into captivity. Guess what? Underneath the new covenant, you ain't in captivity, man. Let me say it again. Underneath the new covenant, you ain't in captivity. You just ain't. You've been redeemed from captivity. Are we still in captivity? The answer is yes. So no, you're not under the new covenant, my man. How the hell are you going to be under the new covenant and you in captivity? Anyway, John 1 and 17. For the law was given by Moses, but... Grace and truth came by Yahweh Shai. That's right. Yahweh Shai gave us grace. And through that grace, we have access to get to the new covenant so we could be made perfect. Under the new covenant, we're made perfect. Okay? Um, let's get some more. Oh, look at this. Acts 13 and 43. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of the Heavenly Father. There you go. Continue in the grace of the Heavenly Father. Uh, Acts 15 and 40, And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of of the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father was showing grace. Oh, this is the Apostle Paul speaking here. But none of these things move me. The same one who said we're under grace, Romans 6, 14. But none of those things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Yahweh to testify the gospel of the grace of the Heavenly Father. Check that out. This is Acts 20 and 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to the Heavenly Father and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Romans 1 and 5. By whom we have received grace and apostleship. Ooh, come on, man. 
I can, I can shut the video down on that one. Okay. <laughs> it didn't say we have received the new covenant. It said we have received grace. That's what we've received. Grace. Okay. R Romans 1 and 5. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Because Israel was scattered among all nations. Uh, Romans 3 and 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Yahweh Shai. Right, the redemption. Have we uh, been totally redeemed yet? Nope. Have we acquired the redemption yet? Nope. The redemption will happen when we are totally changed. Because the, the word redemption means buy back. The redemption is complete. I mean, we're in the beginning of it. We're in the beginning of being, redemp uh, being uh, in the redemption. But have we fully uh, uh, acquired it yet? No. The answer is no. That's going to happen when we're changed. We'll be totally redeemed. The, the word uh, redemption comes coming from redeemed. Okay? And that means we're part of the elect. Uh, let's see that it might be. Oh, okay. Let's read this one. Romans 4 and 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be made sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. And that was the Israelite foreigners. All right. Uh, Romans 5 and 2, by whom also we have access, we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of the Heavenly Father. What's the hope? Number one, we're going to be delivered by Yahweh Shai. Number two, we're going to be made immortals. Our bodies are going to be changed. We so desire those new bodies because in the bodies we're in now, we're, we get sick, we get tired, we get de demons attack us, and man, we go through all kind of shit. Okay? Being in these, these, that's why the Apostle Paul came to the conclusion he's a wretched man. That's the conclusion we're, we, we have come to. We're, we're nothing but wretched men, truth be told. Uh, Romans 5 and 15, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace, the grace of the Heavenly Father and the gift by grace. <laughs> oh, wow. Which is by one man, Yahweh Shai, have abounded unto many. Come on, man. How you get around that? How do you get around that? Uh, Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of what? Grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Yahweh Shai. Uh, Romans 5.21, that as sin have reigned unto death, even so my grace reign through righteousness unto, the etern unto eternal life by Yahweh Shai our Lord. Romans 6 and 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And the answer is no. We try as much as possible not to sin. But do we end up sinning? Absolutely. The Apostle Paul said, it's not I that sin, but sin that dwelleth in me. We're in the likeness of sinful flesh. And the Heavenly Father understands that. That's why, every, you know, the Heavenly Father pardons us for our sins. That's why we do the Day of Atonement. That's why we keep, we, we stay humble before Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, knowing that we are not perfected yet. <clears throat> you know? And again, the, the famous scripture, Romans 6 and 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. That's, a, that, that's the end. Of what is the conclusion of the matter? There it is right there. We're under grace, man. All right, Romans 6, 15. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law? See, Paul is clearly telling you, you're not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. There you go. But there's sometimes we're going to sin. We can't help it. We're in sinful flesh. And to be justified by the law, you can't sin. You can't break one law. If you break one law, it's guilty as if you break all of them. So it's clear these Israelites don't understand what they're involved in. Romans 11 and 5. Even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Come on, man. How you get around that? 
there's a remnant. What's, what's another title for the, the remnant? The elect, also known courtesy of Pastor Taha, who said it, also known as the preserved of Israel. They are what? There's a remnant according to what? According to what? To the election of what? Of what? Grace. The election of grace. There you go. Didn't say the election of the new covenant. You got to get grace first to be under the new covenant. Grace will lead us to the new covenant. Grace is, gives, gives us access to the new covenant, which we will receive when Yahweh Shai comes back, when we're changed. Again, a lot of these Israelites have no idea what they're involved in. Romans 11 and 6, And if by grace, then it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. So what's the conclusion of the matter? We're under, under grace. We've been given grace. Romans 12 and 3, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. So now you have these guys talking about they can't sin, right? They can't die. So are they thinking more highly of, themsel of themselves than they ought to think? The answer is hell yes. So they're reprobates, man. They are deluded reprobates. They're putting themselves on the pedestal. If that's the case, wait a minute, hold up now. You say you're under the new covenant, right? Which under the new covenant, you can't sin and you can't die. So if you're saying you can't die and you can't sin, then you don't need Yahweh Shai. Tacitly, indirectly, you were saying you don't need Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai is the Savior. He's coming to save us from this flesh and from death. Yahweh Shai is the only one I know that can save us from death. Because he himself conquered the flesh and he conquered death. As it is written, death was impossible to hold him. But you, you little upstart, you little, you little weirdo reprobate, you are now saying, <laughs> listen to what these guys are saying. They are now saying that they cannot sin, right? And they can't die. So my question is this, you don't need, do you need a savior? You don't need a savior. You can save yourself. Since you can't die, so when the nuclear missiles come, you, you won't, you, you know, you won't, uh, if you, <laughs> the, nucle the nuclear missiles or the chariots of the Lord won't have, uh, you know, the laser beams won't have no power over you because, you because you can't die, right? Even before that, when the race wars break out, when the famines break out, when, when Esau makes this MOTB mandatory and he goes, he goes uh, gangbusters, on trying to bring his new world order, killing as many people as he can, like the scriptures say he will do, because the Heavenly Father going to put the Spirit on him to do it. You don't have to worry about that because you can't die, right? You see how deluded these clowns are? You can't die and you can't sin because you're under the new covenant, right? <laughs> okay, Romans 12 and 3. Or oh, did I read that already? Yeah, I did. well, you know, I'll read it again. Romans 12 and 3. For I say, through the grace given unto you, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But this is what happens when you teach unsound doctrine, like we're under the new covenant. You start to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Talking about you can't sin and you can't die. Nigga, is you crazy? But they are crazy. All right? They are crazy. <laughs> Uh, but to think soberly, and that's why we say we're not under the new covenant. We're under grace. That is thinking soberly. Okay? According as the Heavenly Father have dealt to every man the measure of faith. Romans 12 and 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Oh, that's it. That's the last scripture. There you go. Having then, Romans 12 and 6, having then gifts Different according to the grace. Yeah, because you got many brothers in this thing about that have different gifts. Some have the gift of tongues. Some have the gift of uh, healing. Some have the gift of giving. You know, they're, they're made helps. But the greatest gift is what? To prophesy, to teach. Prophesy, that's the greatest gift. So they, they, you have different brothers with different gifts, right? But all those gifts are given to us by what? By what, people? The new, the new covenant, right? No, by grace. It's right here. Romans 12 and 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Case closed. Whether prophecy, which is the greatest gift, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Come on, man. That's it. That's it. 
end of video. On to the next one.